We have assembled here today to pay tribute to a great man, uh, but for whose contributions and many services, uh, science wouldn't have been where it is today. Uh, he was a founder of Scientometrics, and uh, which has contributed a variety of fields, uh, not only for the searching of scientific information and building knowledge upon what is already known, but also to the sociology and history of science. Uh, to speak about these things today, we have two very distinguished speakers. One who has been associated with Dr. Garfield for a very long time, and another who has virtually read every word written by Dr. Garfield. Uh, uh, I will give a brief introduction to the theme of the meeting today, and then proceed to introduce them. I first met Dr. Garfield through the pages of Current Contents and Index Chemicals. When I was, uh, in, I was an editorial assistant in New Delhi in CSIR. But I came to face to face with Dr. Garfield when I was secretary and editor of publications at the Indian Academy of Sciences uh, here in early 1975. Indeed, the very first talk Dr. Garfield gave in this country was at this institute, but not in this hall, but in the seminar hall of our library. And it was very well organized, and uh, he was full of praise for Professor Radhakrishnan, who then was director of the Raman Research Institute, an astronomer. Uh, subsequently, he came to India twice and uh, visited several cities, including Hyderabad, Bangalore, uh, and Chennai. And he gave the Sharda Ranganathan Memorial Lectures at DRTC here. He gave Ranganathan Memorial Lecture at the Madras University. Uh, and he met with Professor Pushpa Bhargava in Hyderabad, and so on. Uh, why should I keep talking about Dr. Garfield? And what is my relations with him? We are similar in many ways. Both of us are dropouts. Okay, both of us began in, to do research in chemistry and abandoned chemistry in favor of doing information science. Both found that uh, people often uh, used mathematically, mathematics unnecessarily without any need and com made things complex. And uh, both had a penchant for networking. Uh, I, I used to call people people. Our friendship of over 40 years meant a great deal to me. He was like a mentor at a distance, like something like Dronacharya. So I used to correspond with him all the time and uh, he used to and give me whatever I needed. Uh, he supported my research virtually all through. I'm not unique in this respect. He has been providing such support hundreds of people around the world, especially people from Eastern Europe, uh, uh, both before and after the Soviet Union collapsed. Hardly anyone in this audience would not have been benefited by uh, Dr. Garfield Swack. His fertile mind invented newer and newer products and services to deal with uh, information and build new knowledge. He was constantly connecting people to people, which I will show, idea to ideas and people to ideas. He started current contents from what is called the chicken coop, a very famous picture you will see later. He developed more than, currently it is about 80, uh, when I read long ago it was about 30. And uh, at one time, uh, current contents was read by more people than nature and science put together. That shows the influence of the man and his ideas. And to give the uses of current contents, which is all continuous pages of contents, pages of journals, and indexes of names and the words, the permute term, subject index, and so on, to the ennui, to break the ennui, he started writing about science. And, uh, they appeared initially as current comments in the front pages of current contents. Currently, they are available as 15 volumes of essays, each two inches thick. There are more than 1,000 essays. I didn't count, but I'm sure it is more than 1,000. I often reminded of Balram, who wrote every two weeks an essay in current science, 
And if you add up, I think there should also be more than 1,000. And for some reason, he's refusing to give permission to put them as SA subal uh, Then came the citation index, uh, index chemicals, and several other products. Citation indexes connect uh, ideas through linking footnotes of papers. And unlike the abstracting services earlier, like chemical abstracts or biological abstracts or engineering index and so on, uh, you can go, you can navigate backward and forward. This facility he provided to us. People knew about picking order, always. We all knew about the picking order. But he was the one who quant made quantitative measures of this picking order and gave what is called JCR, JCR an impact factor. He came up with the first newspaper for science called The Scientist, which is now a free to read online daily. It's a daily newspaper. You can check on the web every day what is happening new, but it is confined mainly to biology and life sciences. Now, all that he has written is available in the web page. Every word written by Garfield is available. There is a website in University of Pennsylvania uh, where he has uploaded all his papers. So th th this is the website. This is the on the left, you see the chicken coop where he started his uh, business. On the right, you see the modern building, which won an award in Philadelphia uh, for his uh, architectural uh, grace uh, from the beginning to when he became a successful businessman. Uh, I was mentioning about uh, his connections. In the first picture, the two extremes, you see Joshua Lederberg and Roald Hoffman, two Nobel laureates. Lederberg for biology, Hoffman for chemistry. In the second, you see Robert Merton and Harriet Zuckerman. Robert Merton is a presidential gold medal winner in U presidential medal winner in USA. He's a sociologist, and there's no Nobel Prize for sociology. And the middle is Derek De Zola Price, the man who wrote History of Science and made published a book called Little Science, Big Science, and uh, which was a bestseller. And on the right, you see uh, Garfield with Bernard Dixon, long-time editor of New Scientist. Uh, on, the on the left, you see Miriam Rothschild, a very rich woman and also a great scientist. She had published more than 250 papers in marine biology and other fields, and parasitology. And then at the bottom left, you see uh, Pyotr Kapitsa, one of the greatest physicists of all times from Soviet Union. And then you see Madan, who is that in the middle, bottom? Uh, Pudovkin. Yeah, Sasha Pudovkin, the man who collaborated with the Garfield to produce what is called his site, about which I'm going to show a slide. And at the end, one of, one of the greatest human beings of all time, for at least for the left thinkers, J.D. Bernal. So this is the kind of people he was surrounded with. And of course, he also let in people like me to be with him. This is an example of a his state picture. Take, for example, nanotubes, uh, which is quite uh, popular in this campus and other campuses in this town. So there were, at the time this paper was written, there were close to 10,000 documents in, uh, mentioning nanotubes. And the connections of the key papers is identified. There are 30 of them. And you may see the name of one Ajayan, uh, uh, and one of them in the second, and somewhere down the line, which I had to cut for want of space there. So he was able to build such structures. So using the citations or footnotes of papers, he was able to build uh, uh, or understand the structure of science. So this is what, finally, his interest was not only in science and social sciences, arts and humanities and scholarship, but also in finer things of life. He was a great patron of art, music, theater, um, uh, and all that is great. He has taken me to opera, he has taken me to theater, he has taken me to paintings, and his own building, office as well as home, full of art. Hundreds of thousands of dollars invested on art. And he has supported a tribal community from Mexico uh, called Huicol people, uh, and who are experts in making yarn paintings using beeswax on plywood. And his building is full of that. And he has donated quite a few paintings to all of us. In fact, in the recently held Philadelphia meeting, all the speakers were gifted by Mrs. 
uh, Mayor Garfield with a small uh, yarn painting. Now, let me turn to our speakers. First, David. Uh, David Pindlebury started his career at ISI in 1983 as a translator and indexer. But early in 1984, he joined Dr. Garfield, his personal research group. And he was a developer and the first editor of the research section page of the Scientist newspaper. He developed and edited the research department's newsletter called Science Watch. And he was the research department's manager of con contract research. He had served as consulting citation analyst ever since he left Philadelphia and moved to his home in uh, Oregon. His focus has always been on the company's publication and citation data and trying to extract the most possible in terms of journalistic features and research studies, mostly in the realms of analyzing the structure and dynamics of science, research trends, emerging areas, as well as performance rankings. He travels, but not as much as Garfield. He travels to places where research is done, where he could find high quality collaborators, scientist collaborators, where he could contribute from his information point of view, and together they produce. For example, he collaborated with the Chinese to produce the latest report on uh, uh, science structures for 2016. Um, and people constantly ask him whenever he travels about who will win Nobel Prize, uh, are we doing well, can we use scientometrics and so on. He has his own, his own ideas about it. I won't preempt him, he is going to talk about it. Now, turning to Balram. I think I shouldn't talk about Professor Balram to this audience. Everyone here knows him. Even so, uh, he was the former director of this institute, former editor of Current Science, and um, uh, he had his uh, undergraduate education from Ferguson College in Pune, and then a master's degree from IIT Kanpur, a doctorate from Carnegie Mellon, postdoctoral work at Harvard. Uh, his pedigree is top class. Then he came here as a lecturer, and he never moved out of his campus. He stayed put forever. Yeah. So uh, the two gentlemen are going to tell us about uh, Garfield the man, and Garfield uh, uh, his contributions, and God, what his contributions mean to us as scientists and scholars. First, I invite David, please. 